It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of April 18th, 1997. We've got five movies to look at today, so let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and jump on and into it. We'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is the thriller Murder at 1600. Boy, that escalated quickly at the end. Um, yeah, that... Um, that took a whole nother, that just took a whole nother level there at the end there, but, uh, it, no, you know, I got nothing against that guy. That guy's a really good character actor, Daniel Benzali, but, um, he's pretty good in this. In fact, the, I like this idea that the movie is trying to go for here, an idea about having a murder happen within the White House, you know, you never had a, you never had somebody getting murdered in the White House, um, ever since the, this, before this movie had come out, or even since this movie came out, there's never been anything about a murder inside the White House, but, um, Hopefully that hopefully that doesn't become the case in the future. But um, it's a, it's an interesting idea. It could have a lot of potential for a really cool action thriller concept here. I mean, there's a lot that's going for this movie to succeed. But if you watch the trailer closely, you can get a pretty good idea of who the bad guy is. Who's the who's the guy that started is that's involved in the murder, and you can see where it's going to go here. His plan, all that type of stuff, and it just. It's just a, it's a real letdown of a film, honestly. Like the story itself, it starts off very promising, but then it goes the by the notes. It goes by the notes of what you expect from a thriller like this. You get a, is you have a pretty good idea who the bad guy is pretty quickly, who's the murderer, and there's no real surprises. There's no real twists to it, and it's such a shame too because there is so much that could be done with this with this plot here. And the cast overall is very good. Wesley Snipes, I think, is very good in this movie. So is Diane Lane and Alan Alda. Um, yeah, Ronnie Cox playing the president, uh, Dennis Miller, he's actually okay in the movie, he's not doing his usual stick here, and, like, there's a lot here that definitely could work towards the, towards the success of the film, but the story just goes, the, the, a typical formula, formulaic route here, you get, is you don't have any real surprises, you don't, is once you figure out who you think it's, who you think it actually is, it turns out, it is indeed actually who you think it is, and, it just doesn't work. It's a movie that really... I was really let down when I saw this mo movie for the first time. Because I thought the tra the concept was so good. I thought the trailer was really cool as well. But, you know, honestly, it just really didn't deliver on everything that it promised. It's a film that has so much potential to be something really good. But it just goes the been there, done that run. And I think that's its biggest problem. There's no real twist. That There's no real twist. There's no surprises to make it stand out on its own. It's just a very poorly made film, and it's a disappointment too, considering the promise that it had going forward in the beginning. It's a shame. I really wanted this movie to be really good, but unfortunately, it just isn't. So that's Murder at 1600. So let's go ahead and move on to the next movie. Um, another big disappointment, you would say, uh, Tom Arnold in McHale's Navy. First of all, it's not a very good sign if your lead star, Tom Arnold, is barely in the, is barely in the trailer. Like, he plays Mikhail in this version, and even you have the original... Or is Another thing that's going against the movie is that Ernest Borgnine, who played the original Mikhail, is in the film, and you only see him in one scene, and he's not even listed in the main credits. Like, you see everybody else in there. Tom Arnold, Dean Stockwell, Deborah Messing, David Alan Greer, Tim Curry, Bruce Campbell, French Stewart, Danton Stone. They don't even bring in Brian Haley from Baby Stay Out on Little Giants, or even Tommy Chong, who's in this movie. Um... And that should be a pretty much of a warning sign right there that this movie really isn't going to work. It's just like, it's not even that funny, man. Like, it's not a, fu it's not a funny movie. It's not even, it's like, it's not even doing what it's trying, what I think it's trying to do here. It's trying to be more of an action comedy in a way, but it just doesn't really work here. And just, it's, that right there could be a, a sense of what I was thinking when I was going through this movie. I'm scratching my head thinking, what went wrong with this movie? I mean, there's a lot of potential for this to work here. I mean... You've got Tim Curry playing the bad guy. Tom Arnold is actually not a bad choice for the role of the role of Quentin McHale here, here but man, this movie just su just sucks big time. Like it's not even trying to be fun funny. And it, it's the sad part is this is probably the worst movie that Tom Arnold did between Big Bully in 1996 and th and this when he was trying to become a, a star in Hollywood because he had so many bad movies. This might be the absolute worst because is because there's so much potential with what you could do with this, and it just goes to show you that maybe Universal should just stay out of the water because every time they try to make a movie out of is that takes place mostly at sea, you know, Jaws of Revenge, Waterworld, this movie, Battleship, uh, chances are it's going to be a disaster in some way, shape, or form. That even the produ the company, the head of the studio, 
uh, the former head of the studio who produces the whose production company produced this, Sid, Sid Sheinberg, basically said, Mikhail's Navy was a disaster, and I'm not even pretending that it wasn't a disaster. Like, this dude knew this thing was going to be bad big time, and it basically ended the production deal with, the, with his old studio after this film came out. And, um, yeah, what a disappointment with the talent they have on here and the possibilities they could do with this, and this is the end result of it. I mean, such a bad movie, a real, real disappointment on so many levels. That This thing should have been so much better than it actually was, but, no, it's a gigantic letdown, so... Um, uh, speaking of comedies that were gigantic letdowns, let's go ahead and move on to the next movie. I feel like this whole episode is all about expectations and basically having them be all disappointments after seeing them all. Um, here's another one. Joe Pesci and David Spade in Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. It says a lot when the title is the funniest thing about the whole movie. Um... Just a letdown, man. A major, major letdown. This is directed by Tom Schulman. His first film as a director, of course, this is the same guy that wrote Dead Poet Society. He also wrote Medicine Man, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, What About Bob, and Decent Proposal. He's written a lot of good, a lot of solid films in his career. This is his first directorial effort, and this is how it ends up. It's a shame, man, because Joe Pesci clearly is trying his best here. I think he is the best thing about the movie, but... Everybody else in here is just lifeless. Christy Swanson's not good in this. Neither is David Spade. You start to see with this movie here that without Chris Farley there to kind of be the comic foil to, to him, David Spade is not really all that funny when he's not. It's when he doesn't have a, him Far Farley right next to him. But um, I like the idea of what the film was going for. They were trying to go for like a dark black comedy mixed with an old screwball comedy from the forty, it's from the forties and from the from the forties and fifties and. There's a lot of potential there, but it just doesn't show up on screen. There's not a whole lot of funny material in the film. Like I said, the only thing that really makes it stand out is Joe Pesci. You can see he's fully committed to this, but other than that, though, everything else about this movie is just dull. There's not a whole lot there that really is all that funny. There's no real good humor in there, not a whole lot of well-written characters, not a good script to work with, and the direction's not that great either. You can tell that this is one of those films that... Was was sitting on a shelf at Orion Pictures for a long period of time because this was a fit because like I said because this I've said before this is a, one of those films where Orion was going into bankruptcy so they basically had to put these out over the next couple of years for the studio that eventually bought all these films had to put them out and this is something that was in development for four years before it came out so uh, that should pretty much tell you everything you need to know about this movie uh, such a major letdown man There's so much potential here like I said. The funniest thing about it is the title, and that's not a good sign. That's the best thing you can remember from that movie. So, Anyway, that's Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. Now on to the next movie, Bill Paxton and Mark Wahlberg in Traveler. So you follow a story with a group of a man and a group of nomadic con artists in North Carolina, one of them being Mark Wahlberg. Aside from him and Bill Paxton, Juliana Margulies is in here as well as... Um, uh, James James Gammon and Nikki Deloach, but no, most notably, this is directed by Jack Green, who has been the longtime cinematographer for Clint Eastwood's films, and this is his first movie he ever directed. And um, I don't really know too much more about this movie. I've never really seen it, but the guy's a really good cinematographer. It's very I'd be very interested to see what he'd do as a director. And this thing got pretty good reviews, so there's definitely a chance this could end up actually being pretty good. Um, like I said, I've never seen it before, so I can't really say too much about it. So a quick one on this one. And a quick one on the last one, too, because I haven't seen it either. But we'll run through it real quick. Um, Hollow Reed is next. So the plot of this is basically that a divorced gay man who be begins to suspect his son is being physically abused by his ex-wife's new boyfriend and takes place in the town of Bath, Somerset. Uh, Martin Donovan is in here, Jolie Richardson, uh, Jason Fleming. Uh, some notable names here, but um, I really don't know anything about this movie in general. I've never seen it before, so I can't really say if it's any good or not. I mean, I can't even show you that whole much, a whole lot of the clips there because I don't know what... I don't know what the, That'll matter for copyright reasons, but um, I showed you a little bit as much as I could. But, um, yeah, like I said, I don't really know too much about this one, so I can't really say if it's any good or not. I've never heard anybody really ever talk about it, so um, so I don't know. I don't know if it's any good or not. Um, I don't even see any reviews for it right here on the Wikipedia page, but um, 
But that was the last one that came out this weekend to talk about, so that's Hollow Reed. So with that said, that wraps up another edition of Time About the Movies. Next time we meet, we'll wrap April up with seven movies, including Tommy Lee Jones and Anne Hesch in the disaster thriller Volcano. And we also have uh, Mira Sorvino and Lisa Kudrow in Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion. We have the family classic Shiloh, A Chef in Love, A Brother's Kiss, Flamenco, and Nothing Personal. So seven movies to look at next time around. We'll delve into those on the next episode. But until then... Thank you very much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you very much once again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Until then, as always, take care.